Hello and welcome to another episode of Diary of the Madman, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast where we geek the fuck out about the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Ozzy Osbourne and all things Ozzy Osbourne related. I am Josh Crum. With me as always is Mr. Dan, you are not Dan, Mr. Ryan Beavers. How's it no, going, no, Ryan no. Beavers? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I am good, good, good. Good. So just want to let the listeners know off the top, Dan is unfortunately in business this week. He's been traveling a lot for his job here lately. And he cannot be with us tonight. And uh, we knew we just had to get on and do an episode about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not only the fact that Ozzy got inducted, but the fact that we were able to make it. Ryan and I made it out this weekend to the Hall of Fame induction. Dan couldn't go to that because of his job either. I'm about ready to just fire him from that job so we can get our guy back. <laughs> but uh, we, we thought, well, we'll come on here. We'll try this without him. And you may have noticed, listeners, that this is a much less polished episode with no intro. Jack isn't talking about us on the intro. No music because Dan does all that. And Dan's too busy to do that right now. So me and Ryan are just having to wing it and we're going to get through. But otherwise, how's it going, Ryan? Good, man. I am. Uh, I'm still coming down from my cloud nine a little bit from this weekend. So uh, right. it's still settle. It's still sinking in. Yeah, it felt kind of uh, there was a moment not, not to jump ahead because we definitely kind of want to go in order of the weekend. But there was a moment when Kelly Clarkson's on stage singing "I Want to Know What Love Is" and Lou Graham comes out and I love Foreigner for me personally. I, I know Ryan does too, and I was just like, "Fuck!" Like we're watching history right now, and I was just sitting there kind of having that moment of going, "This is history." And then when they finished, Ryan looks at me and goes. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> and I was like, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Ryan, uh, tell us, man, um, what was the biggest event of the weekend? <clears throat> was it meeting me for the first time in person? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny when you, you know, you talk to someone for 15, 16 years or whatever, it's just on a phone or just like this on video. And then you finally meet them and you're like, I didn't know this guy had two wooden legs. But you know, you get you get used to it. They after call a while. me Eileen. I got a kickstand. They call uh-huh. me Eileen. And that hug <laughs> went on, that hug went on for about thirty seconds too long. But uh, yeah, once I started screaming yeah. help, Brian walks up and I just off. hug him. That's just me, man. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't hug Dan when I first met him because we was in the middle of an airport terminal. Like, and there's cars and traffic. <laughs> like, it was just it's kind of chaotic. So I was like, oh, but you know, yeah. No, but that, that, that was a lot of fun. We've been to yeah. the same show a couple of times. Meeting up just didn't work out. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was cool for for yeah. all the circumstances that it was under. It was it was especially awesome. So. Yeah, and oddly comfortable. And you know, you've yeah. never met Dan, but I was that way when I met Dan too. It was just like I mean, I've known you guys for so long now. You know, you do for a minute assess the aisle. It's like, oh, he looks like you're tall as shit. Like I knew you were kind of tall, but you're taller than I realized. You're, you're like six three, six four. So yeah, I just under six uh, three. Yeah, anyway, he's a big motherfucker. So and I'm <laughs> I'm five eleven, six foot, but I was just like, Oh, okay, he's a big dude. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I was at the luxurious quality inn. Oh, yeah. And uh, Ryan comes to my room, and, and from there we just Uber up to Cleveland because he was uh, he's more of a planner. I'm more of a fly by nighter, <laughs> but uh, it was a good thing he's a planner because we got to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame early, and by the time we left, man, you could not move in that place. Nope, that was like it was as we got we got there at eleven, I think, or a little bit a quarter to eleven, and then like in like little ten minute intervals, you could tell like a few more and a few more and a few more, and I started getting. A little anxious, a little claustrophobic, a little frustrated, you know, as you're sitting there reading um, a plaque or whatever, and yeah, reading about this instrument, and like literally a cell phone just comes straight in front of your face, snap, and then like it's just yeah. like no idea who it is, but it's just no etiquette whatsoever. It's a picture of me taking a photo of the Beatles for Dan or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was Josh half the time, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been to the Rock Hall. Uh, I was there in 2015. It's, for the most part, the same. Uh, the few things, the biggest takeaway was there's a lot more, whole lot more hip-hop. Like, there's a whole wing of hip-hop now that was not there in 2015. You know, that's an argument into itself. Uh, they had a few pieces that I really enjoyed. Uh, most notable for me was Jerry Lee Lewis's Piano which had been beaten to submission. You could see indentions in the keys where he would just freaking hit that piano so hard. So, uh, But cool. what was your, yeah, absolutely. But what was your initial takeaways having been there for the first time now? You know, I was, I was 
pleasantly surprised. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I've lived six hours from Cleveland my my whole life, so it's not like it's any kind of wild road trip or flight out. Um, but I think maybe subconsciously, it was always just had this, this "fuck you." Ozzy's not in, you know, on, on his own. Maiden's not in there. And then there's all these hip hop people, and there's you know who should and who shouldn't be in, and who's deserving, and it's still not there. Um, strangely enough, my yeah. wife is from the Cleveland area. Most of her family is still there. So I've been there how many times in the last 12 years and it just never made it out. Um, I didn't necessarily have a drive to do it. Um, so it was kind of cool this first time, the circumstances, um, making that, making that work. Cause it was, yeah. I, I, like I said, I was impressed, um, because in no other situation, like can I, that can, I can think of, are you going to see these historic, incredible artifacts you know i mean yeah. it's it's gonna be sitting in someone's garage sitting in someone's storage unit somewhere and you know rotting away and uh, you know yeah. it, it just mildew yeah yeah yep and um, they definitely display i mean they do a great job with the displays and getting everything i mean you're close you know yeah, everything's behind glass but you can still be like right there like it's yeah. just you know they do a great job so uh, one thing for sure too, we got to give them props, man. Ozzy was prominent in the building. Like you never know if you're going to go. Let's just be real, man. Randy Rhodes got shit on, and I know it was you know the back door with you know uh, musical excellence and all that, and they don't take those quite as seriously. But like Randy's, I don't want to jump forward to the event at all. But like he had a five minute video, and that was all they mentioned of Randy when he got inducted. He he did have a guitar there and some of his things that Kathy had donated for a short while on display, but. There was this very little, you know, to be made of him. When we got there this week, one of the first things I noticed was Ozzy was prominent. Do you agree 100%? Yep. Whether it was, you know, tapestries hanging around or like all the digital graphics. I mean, the music the music was playing, you know, all throughout our entire visit. Um, it felt like Ozzy's music was played two to one to everybody else's. Yeah. It, yeah. it really did. It felt like it was like a foreigner tune, Ozzy. Mary J. Blige, Aussie. Cher, Aussie. That's kind of how it felt. Unless it just mm-hmm. poked up my ears. I don't know. But it seemed like Aussie was, it's the most like, you know, they don't have a head of the class or anything like that. But, you know, like in the WWE Hall of Fame, they always have that head of the class. There's that one bigger one. Then there's everyone else. It kind of, and I know that, let me be clear, uh, Dave Matthews Band had a ton of people there to see him. I'm mm-hmm. not denying that. And the biggest pop in the event, will agree, was Dave Matthews Band easily, you know. But Ozzy felt like the centerpiece of the weekend for not only us, but like all around Cleveland. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think because, you know, if you were to think of like a, an icon and I, I don't mean like icon as like an, as a person, but like an icon or, or a logo for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like you'd almost picture like the uh, silhouette, the silhouette of Ozzy somewhere right. within that. Um, yeah. Sorry. I, I think of like as a graphic designer or something, but that, you know, he, you're picturing he, like the NBA logo with Jerry West, but only it's Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's rock music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably, yeah. I'd probably Photoshop out the basketball, but yeah, uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, it, it's just, it, when you think of that rock and roll, you think hall of fame, like that's, it's right. synonymous. So they, you know, so even just walking in, you know, they have a few extra things that were different for the weekend. You know, they had all the rock hall, you know, pla- not plaques, but like, uh, you know, everything was just hanging around and, and you could see on the, the digital board had all the inductees and such. And of course, Ozzy's there and all that. And we walk in and the first thing we wanted to do was go look real quick at merch just to see kind of what they had for sale. And immediately, it's mostly Ozzy. Yeah. Right. Since we walked through the gate, there's Ozzy shit everywhere. And it was like, man, like, okay. This is a good yeah. sign. Yeah. You know, two or three different shirts, magnets, records. I mean, a, a lot of Aussie shit. So, mm-hmm. you know, then we, uh, so we're just going to go in chronological order. We're going to usher this along a little bit. Yeah. Then we decided to go downstairs. And one of the things that really stood out, I know for me and it did for you also, was at the bottom of the steps, they had the old jukebox from Foreigner that used to blow up during Jukebox Hero mm-hmm. uh, on stage back in the day. And that's like, that's one of those most icon- iconic things in rock history. Everyone's seen those videos of that big fucking jukebox blowing up. And there it was with fucking duct tape and every damn thing in the world on it to get it to stay blown up. Yeah. But that's cool as hell, right? But to, to me, that's the 
the coolest thing about it is like I I, I personally don't even care about the condition. Like you know, talking about the condition uh, makes it awesomer. <laughs> yeah, talking about Jerry's yeah. gu- guitar, the the ju- the inflatable jukebox, like seeing kind of like the 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 war scars of it. You know, for lack of a better term, Absolutely. um, like it's real. It's been around the world literally, and uh, you know, to be within a few feet of it was was pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. So, but they do have a whole new section for the new inductees, and that was really where the crowd really started getting full because people want to see the new items, and they want to see. Most people was there for someone, like we were there for Ozzy, and everyone kind of had that person they wanted to see, and they had this massive line for the new inductees though, and it was so damn frustrating. They had one lady standing there saying, "Everyone, please get in line. Everyone, get in line." And despite her, every motherfucker in the building wanted to go straight in there and ignore the uh-huh. line that that Ryan and I were waiting and it was pretty frustrating. Yeah, it was. And you know, I know you were trying to like, not even look in there because it, we to, didn't know what was in there. Right. right. But to get, yeah. to give a, a quick description to anybody listening was like, it was just a 12 by 15 room and it's just all glass. And then everything was kind of wrapped in a square with each inductee had its own little section. So I being a taller, peek my head up, look, 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 look around. Josh is trying to be like, I'm going to wait until I get there. I'm like, I'm just going to look. I'm just going to pop my head and see what I can see. Ozzy happened to be on the very, very end to the left where, like, the line wasn't. And it was yeah. the first thing that my eyes made contact with was that, uh, what do you want, what do you call it? The I would call it, like, a sash, like, fucking... A sash, cod whatever. piece, whatever. I mean, we talked so much about like, what's going to be there? What do you think Sharon like pulled out of the closet, you know, out of the storage or whatever? I thought for sure there was going to be a one of the ridiculous Ultimate Sin sequence, you know, jackets or whatever. For whatever reason, the the diary jumpsuit never crossed my mind. And like, I made eye contact with that and I was like, from the top of my head, to my toes was like goosebumps and i just remember punching you in the back and you didn't yeah. you still didn't want to look yeah. like dude <laughs> dude like you oh my god yeah we were good boys we went and got in line you stood there yeah. for you know but the, the cool thing and i'm about still that, trying not to look <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the, the cool thing about the line was that it was the way you described it, it was like a new kind of setup for all the past inductees all like on this plexiglass with their inscribed signatures and like they each band had like a little plaque so as you're waiting in that line you it was it, you could see everything from 23 all the way to 86 i think was the first year i, I think so i think yeah that's right so as you as you're walking like yeah and then you had videos playing so it was there's plenty to keep you yeah, you know, there's music and, and everything else. Taking pictures and stuff until we got up there, but uh, yeah. you, you go ahead and finish okay. off that, that. So yeah, it's uh, Ozzy's is the last. So if you're in the line, his is going to be the last that you would see. And yeah, there it is, the Diary of a Madman, the one that always looked like a chain kind of uh, yeah, yeah outfit. And it even mentioned on the plaque that it was meant to look like chains, even though it was actually just like a woven material. Uh, and there it was, man, in all its glory. And that cod piece is right in your face when you're standing there. <laughs> like, and we've made jokes with the cod piece for years. And I was like, dude, I never fucking dreamed I'd see this outfit in person. Like, oh, fucking magic. I told Ryan the only outfit that may have got me a little more excited would have been the after hours, but the blue shirt with the Aussie across it and the white. Oh hands. man, like, like I really would have went nuts for that. Yeah, yeah. Because we all watched that video so much. And but there it was in all its glory. And in front of it, they had a photo of Ross Halfman of Ozzy with Ronnie, the, the dwarf, wearing that outfit, mm-hmm. you know, which, yeah. was, which was a good touch to have that there. And they did have a, have a few other pieces. And Ryan made the joke and it kind of made me laugh. He said that those were still in Ozzy's fucking closet, which they probably legit were. Mm-hmm. But they had the robe from the Commonwealth Games back in 2022, I believe it was. Yep. They had it on the left. And then on the right, they had. From the 2022 when Ozzy uh, done the Rams halftime game, halftime show, and, and they had those and a pair of glasses and uh, one of his rings, one the big long ring and, and a bracelet. Yeah, it was uh, it was a really really cool. I mean, really yes, cool. those those are. Love you. 
live podcasting. My kids tell me they love me. I, you got, it's actually awesome. I, I appreciate that. I, I thought something was going to foul when he first opened the door, but that's my guy. Okay. But well, yeah, no, it's it was adorable. But, but to be fair, it made for a pretty good looking display. It did. I, you know, I think all of his fans would have wanted something a little deeper. Like you said, an Ultimate Sin era jumpsuit would have been awesome or, you know, but at the same time, they did look great. And the, and the display looked fucking great. It looked amazing. Oh, well, and a necklace, one of the necklaces with the cross on it. Yes. Uh, we agree, not the original, but probably one the Aussies wore, I'm sure, in, in video shoots or something like that before. Yeah. What I what I did like about the the modern, you know, kind of almost like they're almost like capes um, is is like the detail and the intricacy that does not get captured at all on a tv camera um so being up close and seeing like that because i i really really love that look that he had yeah. for the the commonwealth games in, in particular and so seeing that was awesome um but i remember um sharon mentioning in a somewhat recent osborne's podcast that she's got like everything so yeah and i know they're working on that museum in birmingham whatever she's going to end up doing with that so i mean all of that stuff exists somewhere. All of the ridiculous yeah. 80s stuff that he wore over the years um, is somewhere. So I think we might we might have to take a trip once that uh, once that becomes go to Birmingham. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No doubt. But you know, you mentioned the intricacies. Yeah, like the the outfit he wore for the Rams game. Like just the buttons were crosses, and mm-hmm. they were like gold crosses. That stuff you can't really see on TV. Yep. Uh, it, it definitely be- beautiful. Gorgeous mm-hmm. fucking suits, I, I no doubt. Like they, they were sharp. Uh, like I said, I think most fans just wanted something a little more archived. But at the same time, yeah. it was it was a great display. I'm not going to complain about it. And the Diary of a Madman jumpsuit was just fucking. I mean, that was just. We're still kind of. I got a glow. I know it's just kind of like mm-hmm. fuck so, Like I'm still not processed that I've actually been that close to that fucking thing because it was right yeah. of the glass. And you're just yeah. and you know the, the crowd was bumping. Everyone's trying to get in on you. But I will say, Ryan and I, and I'm proud of him too. We took our fucking time with the display. We stood oh, yeah. there for quite a while. <laughs> we were mm-hmm. the dudes that everybody's kind of going, wish they'd move because we were like mm-hmm. literally soaking up every piece of that display. Uh, the Commonwealth Games, he had a bracelet on that they had on the display. It was on the right hand of a big giant bat that just wrapped around his wrist. That thing's freaking amazing, also. <laughs> I'm just trying so, to picture what everyone's like thought process. Like, someone, someone can get these two big guys. Taking self <laughs> taking selfies with a cod piece. Get them out of here. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. So, uh, but yeah, the Rock Hall was was killer. You know, uh, they done a great job. A lot of Aussies music throughout it. There was banners. That's what I was looking for earlier. Huh? There was banners hanging throughout. A lot of Ozzy. Ozzy definitely had his piece in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, as an Ozzy fan, there was no disappointment at all in the actual Rock Hall itself. Uh, and 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 it's interest in Aussie's part of the nomination this year. Do you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, the I would say the only thing I had really any disappointment in. Um, I do recommend anybody who's even mildly interested to go to the Rock Hall. I mean, it was cool. Probably something I won't do again for like you ten years, made up whatever. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily like, hey, let's take a vacation to Cleveland for. But if you're remotely in the area i highly highly recommend it but i was disappointed by the just the metal representation in general oh was, yeah was pathetic i mean it was yeah. a really cool rob helford jacket from like the 2015 tour um one of angus's schoolboy outfits I was say. there was like one sabbath poster i was i was kind of expecting some kind of there's sabbath. very little representation of sabbath and there's a stage plot of sabbath yeah uh, alice, alice cooper's knee-high boots were kind of cool yeah from the from the early days i like that but yeah very little uh and they did have on the other section not in the metal section but they had uh alice cooper's trash leather jacket which is fucking rad as hell mm-hmm. with the spikes and shit that, that, that was very cool i, I love that piece but yeah very little in the, in the metal world at all representation and that's just the way it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Don't so don't go there looking for anything like that. You know, yeah. you, you will definitely be disappointed. But uh, yeah, there's literally sections of Chuck Berry bigger, <laughs> and and I love Chuck Berry, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. like he's one person versus the whole heavy metal 
category. <laughs> like there's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So after that, we had to go get us something to eat, and we walked a couple a couple miles. I don't know, mile and a half to Buffalo Wild Wings, get us a quick drink, and you know. Ryan and I were pleasantly surprised with, you know, the CD plays music kind of like Nashville does. It kind of goes from block to block. You can still hear it. A lot of fucking Aussie, Ryan. A lot of Aussie. Mm-hmm. That was, that was pretty awesome. I mean, just walking the streets of, of Cleveland, you know, after we were turning all the bums away that kept approaching us here and uh, my mom coming home, blasting through the, through the streets, no yeah. more tears, blasting through the streets. It was, uh, it's pretty, pretty damn awesome, man. It was indeed. So, uh, yeah. So then we'll get on to the evening, I guess. The rest of you know, the day, we kind of hung out and just walked around. Ozzy's got billboards everywhere, signage up, posters, as do all the inductees, and, and, and rightfully so. The city definitely embraces Rock and Roll Hall of Fame weekend. No question. Oh, yeah. It was everywhere you looked. Yeah. Yeah. So then we go to the Rock Hall that night and go for the induction ceremony and it lasted forever long. <laughs> oh, it went uh, shit, what, from man. seven o'clock to after midnight. No, uh, and yeah, yeah, it was after yes, midnight. Seven, yeah, yes, because we left yeah. before Dave Matthews finished up, and it was oh. like midnight when we left. So yeah, yeah. And the best part that I got to talk about with you guys is watching this big motherfucker try to sit in those seats. Oh, <laughs> they God. were tiny, man. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm I call him. I was every bit as miserable. <laughs> like he's. When you're, you're it, so when you're when you are six two, and you're sitting in front of a guardrail, there, there there's nowhere to go. And I felt like I was on, on an airplane the entire time. It was just a metal pipe jammed into both of my knees and shins the whole time. <laughs> nowhere to, like unless I was gonna dra- drape a leg across Josh, which he might have liked. That was all I had. That was the only option I had. So just <laughs> by. Yeah, by the end of Ozzy, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, so we got to move out. Mess, so. <laughs> yes. And not to mention the, the same people continuously getting up and going out to get a beer or piss or oh, whatever every yeah. five minutes. And you're having to stand and there's no space there. Like it was the, the upper arena of the Rocket Mortgage Arena is extremely tight. That, let's yeah. just say it that way. And yeah. Uh, just trying to let people squeeze by the same people over and over and over. And it, 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 it's it, not the most comfortable environment for that kind of, I told Ryan, I said, I cannot imagine doing two days of WrestleMania up here. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Be, no, that would be misery for sure. For sure. Another thing we got to comment on too, by the way, come on, man, with these beer prices come. the fuck Oh on. yeah. I got I two mean, beers and it was $34. And I was like, yeah, then, mine, mine, mine was 38 and that was Ryan's getting... were, and Ryan comes over and he's like two beers th- he's, these are my last two beers and I'm like 100% uh, <laughs> oh after I, th- wow. I I had to throw down like maybe six beers at Buffalo Wild Wings for four dollars a piece like, like this is insane like this is insane. a great way to stay sober so yeah yeah <laughs> but so, man by that by that four and a half five hour mark I was I was I contemplated to pull the trigger on another $38, but I, I, I held off. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan, I don't want to hog, you know, you're telling me to go, but I don't want to tell the whole story. So the Rock Hall opens up, and the first nominee they discuss is the legendary Cher. Yeah. Um, well, quick sidebar to that. So most people listening to this don't know. Like, I'm vaguely familiar with, like, the, the pop women of the world between my wife and my four-year-old daughter but uh we i damn near knocked dua lipa over when we were in the actual hall of fame she was actually there in the merch section and i had turned and almost ran directly into her had no idea at the time and there was security everywhere people running around women snapping photos i'm like what is going on she, that's all oh, it's dua lipa i'm like holy shit I'm like i think she's there tonight and lo and behold, she was she opened the show. The very started, first artist. <laughs> yeah. Like, so she was really pushing it timing wise. Um, because she was dressed up, you know, totally kind of incognito. You would never think anything of it. And then she comes out dressed to the tens and uh yeah, Cher opened up. You know, it was it was a it was again, it's just one of those experiences where it's like when am Am I ever going to see these people again? In particular, like, and these people together again. 
I don't listen to Cher. I don't care a whole lot about Cher, but seeing her up there and listening to her perform and watching, like listening to her speech was incredible because she is an icon and has been for decades and decades before I was ever born. So that was really, really, really yeah. cool. I mean, it just, you know, and as the night went on, I think after that was cool in the gang. Um, another one of those situations like, I'm not bumping them in my car. But I knew every one of those songs. So I was like, oh 100%. my. Like, whether you listen to it or you just know it by, like, you know, proximity. Um, their performance was a blast. You know, I think after that was Foreigner. I'll let you, you can talk about Foreigner. No, no, you're fine. I, I was going to say, in share for me, I got to say, that was the sleeper, awesome fucking moment of the evening for me. I grew up yes. in an era where she was fucking massive. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you know, the movie Mask, I remember loving that movie when I was growing up, and she, of course, starred in that and and things, and just such an iconic person that, for me, and I, I it's not, like you said, I don't go around jamming it in the car, but I, I do like some of her music, you know what I mean? Like, it's not mm-hmm. something that's on, I gotta go turn that off, or, ugh, you know? Uh, seeing her, for me, was huge. Like, aside from Ozzy and Foreigner, I think that was the next coolest one for me. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of had the suspicion going in, also. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, uh, Cool and the Gang. I saw them with Van Halen in 2012. I think it was different kind of truth tour and loved them. Uh, like you said, you don't think you like them until you listen and you know every fucking song they do. And you're like, oh, yeah, I love that song. Oh, yeah, yeah they they were excellent. They were a lot of fun. Uh, but Foreigner, of course, was a highlight also for, for everyone there. It's been spoke about to death, but. 20 years overdue or so for this rock hall nomination on those guys. Mm-hmm. It's like Sammy Hagar said in his induction speech, they've had, he said, you know, every artist begs for that mega hit. These motherfuckers have had nine of those mega hits. And that's just a reality. They got like nine songs that are on the radio all the freaking time. Mm-hmm. And they're huge. And, you know, they've had beef with some of the rock hall members over the years that the committee members. So glad to see them, uh, finally get their due and you know sammy hagar inducts him he's funny everyone loves sammy mm-hmm. love to see him out there and uh you know like i said there was a moment when they were doing uh you know i want to know what love is and kelly clarkson was singing it who's lost a ton of weight by the way yes and um she was singing that and then you know lo and behold here comes lou graham and i was just like fuck this is so damn cool and incredible the band was the current foreigner band which, you know, Mick Jones has had together for all these years. But the funny thing was, is Lou and all the other original members of Foreigner were praising those guys and how much they love them and thankful that they kept it alive. Like, they didn't have to mention those dudes. Right. Uh, Kelly Henson, the, the current singer, he was there with them all. You know, they're not getting inducted, but they were still there in support. But when they were doing I Want to Know What Love Is, I was just sitting there going, like, I had chills. And I was just like, we're witnessing history right now. Like this is one of those moments people will talk about for fucking ever. Yeah. And then the song finishing around with me goes, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> and I was like, legit. Like that was some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. And it was one of those things too. Like, I think it was Kelly. So it was Kelly Clarkson and Demi Lovato. And you hear those names and you're like, what? But man, they killed it. They killed like, it. Whether you care about the music at all, whether it's anything you'd ever listen to or watch, they they did it justice. I mean, you're talking yeah. and you're talking you're talking about vocal performances that are not, you know, you're not picking up anybody off the street and just in pulling yeah. that off. Like they really hit it hard and they yeah. they nailed everything. They were, it was a lot of fun. And Sammy sang a, a song. Yes, I, my memory. I need to go back and watch the foreigner section again because I can't remember. I want to say Sammy and Slash did head games, but I might be wrong. Yes. I feel like it was, but um, I do yep. recall Slash fucking destroying the guitar solo. And I was mm-hmm. like, and I looked at you and I was like, fucking Slash just ripped that guitar solo. And then I looked down on my phone and I had a text from one of my coworkers that said, Slash is the fucking man. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, legit, like he just tore one down in here. Uh, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. I love Warner. Yeah, it was, uh, it, you know, when you just don't know what to expect, honestly. You know, I've I've watched very small bits and pieces of, of previous ceremonies, really only bands that I care about, whether it's, you know, ACDC or Sabbath or whatever. Um, so I didn't know 
a whole lot of what to expect. And uh, I mean, people are standing up, they're dancing in the aisles. Like everyone was having a blast. The best time. Yes. Yeah. Every time it would show, like on the video board, when they would do the videos and it would show Cindy Lauper or whoever, the crowd would just <laughs> cheer seeing those people's faces on the video board. Yep. And yep. Everyone was just so into it and the environment was so fucking great. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm going to start coming to this every year. Mm-hmm. Like I, it crossed my mind. I'm like, everyone come. This is a fucking blast. Yeah. And I hate to say it. At that point, it came to kind of a screeching halt. Oh, it? Uh, <laughs> a screeching, it, slogging yeah. zombie halt. Oh. And I mean, it started with our man Dave Chappelle. Actually, let me be clear. Dave Chappelle wasn't the halt. He wasn't the issue. No. Right after Dave's induction induction speech for a tribe called Quest, things yes. changed really quick. Yeah, he 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 as you know, whether again, same thing, whether you're a fan of his com- comedy or whatever, he's a brilliant speaker. He's someone that I can he can read the dictionary to me and I'm and I'm I'll sit down and I'm gonna listen. So his you know, and he's got a history with with tribe. Um yes. so it was kind of I cool was here. I was excited just to physically see him. I've never seen him before in comedy or on yeah. stage. I was like, I'm I'm looking at Dave Chappelle, this is fucking cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. being in the room with him. Yeah, and he just and he nailed it. And uh who boy. Anybody who has Disney Plus and has watched yet, when you see a runtime of five and a half hours, let me tell you, it only feels like twelve because <laughs> <laughs> Man, it just it was it started it just started with the tribe. It and they started came with out, the tribe. And they yeah. came out and they did their thank yous and they just went on and I like I wanted to claw my eye. And then and, and my dad yeah. was at home at their house watching at the same time and yeah, I mean, he texts me he's like someone tell him to shut the fuck up because they were sitting <laughs> yes because they're sitting he was sitting he's excited waiting for Ozzy and it's just man going and going he and later yeah. on he said he counted while it was on he ended up muting it that dude had 30 index cards oh my god it just yeah. kept it went on and on oh you talk about sucking the life out of it's 17,000 people 100 that room died during yep. that dude's speech it just did. Yep. it did lead to the great moment when dave Chappelle made the joke thank you for those brief statements <laughs> yes <laughs> finally finished up and the crowd oh. erupted for that joke but yeah, and then and then they started walking off and they forgot one of the the one of the members the died dad. and his yeah. dad was there to speak so they come back and i'm like oh my god what he ended fuck? up being funny as hell he was yes. great yes he was actually really good it's like, and I, as I said to you after that, it's like, I totally understand why the Academy and the Grammys or whatever, they start playing music so you can get the fuck off because you got to do it. It's just like, let me tell you the story about my, this guy that my sister dated and people are like, like you could hear like this just yeah. rumbling groan throughout the arena. Like what is and to going- be fair, We love Dave Chappelle, but his monologue went a bit long also. Yes. I, I, even before that. So you're already starting to kind of eh, slow down a little bit. Yep. But yeah, he, he went forever and it was just like, fuck. And that, then the, even the musical performance for them, I, they just, I just don't see them as a band deserved to be there. I just don't. Uh, I, I even don't. the performances, I didn't know those songs. Did, did you know those songs? Um, I, I know the Can You Kick It? Yes, We Can. I know that song. Okay. Um, that's, know that song. that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah, then so it didn't get better after that. It was it, it, it then we have after that uh the lady who I guess she discovered the Jackson Five or something of that effect. Some kind and, of influencer and, award. And she spoke for a long and she, this was just like a musical influence award. Like kind of like Randy Rose got a couple years yeah. ago when no one got to speak on his behalf. And this lady spoke for so she she the, the tribe called Quest guy she matched him. <laughs> it was long yeah. and it kept going and kept going. And I was like, okay, we're starting to really. But what Ryan said earlier was exactly about how it sucked the air out of the room because all that joy everyone had, all that cheering for every time, it was gone. They yeah. they were hardly clapping or applauding anything at this point. Yeah, because the, well, because these acceptance these speeches were turning into like wikipedia autobiography reads it's like a, mm-hmm. 
if you I have did this to, and I did that. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Like what? I just put your link up on the screen or something like that. And I'll read about it later. I, why are we doing this? Here's uh, the QR code. Move the fuck on. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Here's who For I real. am. Yeah. It, it was night. bad. And, uh, I'm just going to breeze through this because, you know, we don't want this episode to go too long. After that, they had the Jimmy Buffett induction. Let me be clear. I think Jimmy Buffett 100% deserves to be in the Rock and Hall of Fame. Yep. The odd decision they made was they had Dave Matthews sing a song that I'd never heard. I, I, I don't know, pretend to know Jimmy's catalog, no. but it was an acoustic song that I don't know. It was boring and it was long after these two long ass fucking speeches already. Right, no. Ryan? Yep. And then they did the video. The videos are always kind of fun just to kind of get, you know. And then yeah. they come back out and they have Kenny Chesney and James Taylor. James Taylor was kind of funny. He inducted uh, Jimmy Buffett. He was funnier than I thought he would be, mm -hmm. but not but not great. But he did he did a good job. Yeah. And they have James Taylor and Kenny Chesney and some other dude who I didn't know. Do you know? The I other think dude? it was Bev Bevan. I don't know. I don't, that, and yeah. they're acoustic and they're not doing Margaritaville. And they're not doing this five o'clock somewhere. They're doing another deep cut that I shouldn't say deep cut if you're a fan of Jimmy's, but not the ones that the basic. Here's my thing. I'm just going to say if they had done motherfucking Margaritaville, the crowd would perk right back up. Wasted away. Everybody had been singing yeah. it. And had arms, around each, arms around each other. Yep. Yes. But they did. They sang like this it. other damn song, San Francisco, something. I, I, I don't know. It was a good song, but I mean, at that point in that night, it just drugged the night even more. Yep. Whereas they could have really, they missed the golden opportunity with Margaritaville to bring the crowd back into it. Yeah. So then we're going to, we're going to forge along. Then they do Mary J. Blige. Dr. Dre. She's fine. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Dr. Dre, Dre method man. Yep. Right. Talk and talk and talk and their history and how far back they go. And she's a queen and this like just on. And on, she finally comes out, and then she opens up with like a ballad. It only lasted like it was, she did kind of a medley thing, I think. But it, and also that she she opened with a medley. But the thing about real quick, Dre spoke forever, so I assume Method Man would just kind of chime in. He got as much time as Dre did. It went. I was like, fuck. Yeah. So you got like four artists in a row just sucking the life out of the room, like yeah. completely. Yeah. So it. So, and then, you know, she does her performance. She did fine. She does Dance With Me and brings a little bit of life back in. This, this is a good song. Yeah. And then her speech, a good 10, 12, 15 minutes. Some it of was that. long. Same it thing. Was long. Like, here's what it, I've accomplished. Here's what yeah. I, where I came from. This is how great. I was like, oh boy. It just. Yeah. Uh, the night got long. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're, we're waiting for Ozzy and, you know. I kind of like that he was near the end. So I kind of see that as kind of a headlining kind of thing, like mm -hmm. I, you know, to me. But at the same time, it was just like, uh, and we wouldn't have left. Maybe clear if Ozzy had done, if he was second, we wouldn't have left or anything. But no. it, it, it made the night very long at that point. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so as she's speaking, they're setting up, you know, as each person is doing their thank yous and their, their acceptance thing, they're setting up the stage in the dark in the background. Like they're just moving you know, lightning speed, and I saw some flashlights. Real quick, before you say what you're going to say, and I know what you're going to say, kudos to their crew. Because oh they God. got that shit up and off stage like fucking magic. It was quick. Yep. Their setup is is amazing. It's, it's, yeah. it's on point for sure. Every instrument was crystal clear for every performance. Every vocal was right there. Um, I would say they had some mic issues for like the – for the inductees in the very beginning, but they fixed it relatively Oh, quick. yeah, we kind of forgot about that. Yeah, you couldn't hear the inductees hardly speak at first. Everybody's like yelling, turn the mic up. Oh, yeah. Turn Just, the mic yeah. up. And then I yelled, turn the mic up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they uh, finally figured they, it out. Yeah, after, after, about, after about the second artist or so, they finally got that cranked up a little bit. But, yeah, that was, that was yeah. an issue early on for sure. Yeah. So, so I'm then, sorry. I interrupted your story. Here we go. Oh, you're good. No, so that – and. Like so, the stage is all dark, and you see flashlights. People trying to see where they're walking, and I just got like the reflection that the flashlight accidentally went across the Chad Smith's drum head. It just said Ozzy. I'm like, dude, he's next. He's next. He's next. Like, all of a sudden, I've been half asleep for the last two hours, and I know that the at least at this point, I know that it's Ozzy's turn. We have 
zero clue. There is no indication whether the man is in the building, whether the man is even in Cleveland, or if he's even in the state of Ohio. So, and then in in watching back, um, they showed him on camera like two or three times before they ever actually showed him to us in the arena. Oh, okay. So it was a total surprise to us. Like just suddenly we got like a, a quick glimpse, like on the big screen. That's where everyone just erupted. Um, it's like, man, he'd talk like, I just instantly, like I knew he was here. I teared up. I start to, I just text my wife. He's here. He's here. Like just exclamation points f- forever. Um, Cause she had been texting me throughout the night. Like, is he here? Do you know? The anticipation yeah. killing me. What's going on? I'm like, I have no idea. Still waiting. And, uh, but yeah, it was, it was something, man. Um, yeah, you can go go ahead. And you say your piece. No, about he, it. Uh, no, yeah. So at that point, we know it's Ozzy. He's next, right? Yeah. And uh, when Mary J finally finishes up, and Jack Black comes walking out, and I got to tell you, you know, Ozzy said early on, "I hope Jack Black will induct me." He he, he called that within days of, of the nomination, and I was kind of like, I like Jack Black. Um, I, you know, I like some of his movies. There's times I think he's a little over the top. All in all, I do get a kick out of him. But he's a massive video guy, and he goes on. I don't know. I was kind of like, eh, yeah. Let me tell you, I'll eat shit. Jack Black stole the show of the night. I think he was fucking, he was easily the best presenter, and it ain't close. Yeah. No. It ain't close. Yeah. And he was comical. He was on point. He was... He was everything. He was all the things, as one of my friends at work says. He's all the things. Yeah. He just had such a passionate monologue that, A, I think he was telling the truth about. I think all of his stories were true. I think they all happened. I don't, yeah, I, I think his passion for Ozzy's music and for Ozzy was, was prevalent, how much he, he likes him. I even, I'm spoiler alert a little bit, but I, I got to chat with zach wild on sunday and i told zach i said did you get to hear jack's monologue from the stage and he's like no actually zach asked me three times what what because of my accent he couldn't really hear me that well but i said did you get to hear jack's monologue and he's like no i said you got to go back and watch it like it was fucking perfect it was perfect he, he he nailed it yeah i uh i remember we talked back and forth when Ozzy initially said that I know you were you and Dan are pretty you know trepidatious about it but I I'm a huge Jack Black fan like movies his Tenacious D stuff uh, his YouTube channel that he had a handful of years back like I just he's someone that I would love to have a beer with and smoke a joint with like hands down like my number one choice um and I've watched his interviews many, many times over the decades. And he is as much of a Dio guy as he is. He is just as much an Aussie one. He has talked very candidly, very openly. And I've heard more or less the same version of that story about the Blizzard of Oz, 13 years old, wandering around the record store. Like, and he's always attributed that album into getting him into heavy music. So hearing him tell that, the way he did is like, man, this is just so cool. He made it yeah. funny. He made it personal. He made it like the way, you know, he kind of turned the, like the accolades into like a little bit of a comedy bit. But then like, mm-hmm. when you sit back and you listen to it, you're like, holy shit. Like just the 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 wealth of things that he's done over the, the course of 50 plus years yeah. is stunning um yeah. he mentioned it, oz fest and, and he's yeah like, and the osborns he goes which might be the scariest thing he ever did was the oh my Osbournes. god you know i mean Dude, yeah I was, all of it. I, I was dying like it was i i i couldn't have asked for a, a for a better opening and the, what i liked about it more so much more is that it felt like i was up there or you were up there right. or, dan, or dan was up there because it was a perspective of somebody who didn't know him 40 years ago when yeah. he has a story that goes that far back even further where a lot of the other um, inductees were kind of like counterparts. They're that peers. Yeah, peers. Like Sammy that's, Hagar that's... inducting Foreigner, talking about how I remember when they started and he was already yeah. in the industry and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And they talk about those little stories from like this, you know, the early 70s. And that's and that is cool. 
but that perspective of someone who's like a genuine fanboy like was yeah. I appreciated that so much. Yeah. I don't mean to disrupt where we're going with this, but I just want to say we skipped Peter Frampton. Uh, oh, yes. Peter Frampton had a good performance also. He, he yes. does sit and play, but he can still smoke the fucking guitar. Keith yep. Urban played with him, and Roger Daltrey did his. I was going to say Roger Daltrey was actually fucking hilarious. Yes, he uh, was really good. Did, really his good. induction speech. That was before the screeching halt. <laughs> it was Fram- yes. Frampton, then the screeching halt, because it was I, going I, good, because the crowd was definitely there and good with Frampton also. I knew we missed something. I just couldn't think. Yeah, what it was. I did too. And I was trying to think of it, but but Roger Daltrey and I'm not a big fan of the Who at all. Like they're one of those bands I just I just can't. I don't know what it is, but he was he was damn near comical. He was a funny guy. Like mm-hmm. I was very impressed with him. Yep. Um, but yeah, and the Frampton section was really good. And then a trap called Quest came. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. so back to Jack Black though. Um, he he saved the fucking event. He saved the night. Yeah, he really did. Yep. He saved yep. the night. The, the crowd came back with Jack Black because he was well. For one, I think there's a lot of people there to see fucking Ozzy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. But Jack Black was so fucking good. I I could have kissed him on the mouth, man. Yeah, he he <laughs> was so fucking good. I mean, like, and I loved how he like he just knelt by Ozzy and was just there with him. He's like, you legend, you icon, you know. Just oh my god, <laughs> just teasing yes. him, you know. And it, and and I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I appreciated that too. Was that throughout the performance, he just knelt next to him and like had his hand on his arm. Like throughout, they were singing together. I'm like, dude, it like the the well, the now 39 year old version of me felt the same way as the 16 year old version of me would have felt had I known, you know, that, that this was going to be like something in the future. Man, it was just so so. I keep I use it. As I've described this weekend to people, just surreal is the word that I, that I kind of yeah. keep going to. And um, I couldn't have, have mapped it out, you know, myself any any differently. Um, and I appreciated, which we knew was going to happen. Ozzy was going to keep it brief. He's not, like, despite his charisma, despite the public figure, he hates the public speaking. And I did go back and I watched, rewatched the, you know, the Sabbath um Back in 06, their, their acceptance speech. The four of them combined spoke for about two and a half minutes. So you knew, like, yeah. I was even going to drag this out. He even kind of made a joke out of it. I'm not going to bore you with the fucking endless monologue. I, and, I, I, don't, I wondered if others picked up on that. That was 100%. Oh, I thought a shot at some of the long the long dude, acceptance speeches of the evening for sure. I, I was thinking about this since then. Think of this, this guy. And all the con- the issues that he has physically is sitting in the back, waiting through all of this. Yeah, waiting. It's. I mean, at this point, it's it's damn near midnight. They had yeah. to been losing their minds back there. Like, what the fuck is going on? Because yeah. you know that this went way longer than any of their plans had anticipated. There's no way they had five and a half hours in mind when they booked all of this stuff. So it. I, that he came out and did it the way they did. I I appreciated that. Yeah, but you know, I think even if it had been quick and smooth, I think he still would have done about a two minute speech. I, oh. I think it would have been the same. So Easy. for me, my perspective, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't really expect him to speak at all. I thought he might say, other than to say thank you, I love you all. I thought that might be. I expected Sharon to speak. Me, me too, 100. percent And the fact that she was off stage watching, uh, and he was up there with Jack by himself, and you know, uh. You know us, man. We're Aussie defenders. Here it goes. Fuck off. Anybody that didn't like the speech. Sorry. So he didn't mention a particular person. You know what? He mentioned two, primarily one. Mm -hmm. And if if talking about Randy Rhodes and giving his appreciation to Randy Rhodes isn't good enough, barrels up. I don't know what to say to you. Because Ozzy said, I've played with some of the greatest musicians in the world. Bass players, drummers, guitar players. But I gotta make a, a moment to talk to talk about Randy Rose. I'm sorry that's not good enough. Yeah. You know, I, I would I would love if he'd have said Bob by name. I would have, of course, and so would Ryan and and sure. Dan at home and, and Lee Curse. Like, but you know, he literally gave like a 90 second speech. Mm-hmm. And all he said about Sharon was he said, without Sharon, I would be dead. And without Randy, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. I think that's pretty humble, actually. And Period. uh 
and, and he did say that. all the other guitar players and musicians. I was shocked Jack Black didn't mention Jakey e. Lee. He kind of he, he went straight from Randy to, to, to Zach. Uh, and Jack actually pubbed up Zach quite a bit, I thought, which was pretty cool. I think I, uh, I my thoughts are that, not sorry to cut you off, but are thanks. that I think he was focusing on my, this just totally my speculation that he was focusing on the albums that, that they were focusing the on with, with, the, with the, well, the, yeah. yes, the mega hit. And then the albums that they were focusing on performance wise. Yeah. Okay. Because I've heard, I've heard Jack praise diary before, but didn't mention a word yeah. about it. I don't think it means that he doesn't like, you know, it's just, right. there's a million different ways that you could have went about. He could have sat and he could have thanked every single member that's ever come and gone. But you know what? The ones that people are whining and bitching the most about that he didn't mention have burned that bridge to the ground and pissed on the ashes. So if you thought like, you know, they were going to get some glory day in, you know, glorious day in the sun, it, it didn't happen. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. And like I said, it'd be different if he gave a 20 minute speech and never mentioned those people either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, even yep. Eddie Trunk, I was listening to Trunk just today to see what he'd say. And he said, I'm not going to, he said, I'm not going to harp on Ozzy. He, the speech was brief. He, he did, he did shout out Randy Rhodes. And, you know, he said, I fully expected if he didn't mention Bob and Jake and some of these guys, I'd be upset. But I'm not because of the way the speech went down. It just didn't really call for it. And it didn't. It didn't. No. And so no. that was great. But, um, I was excited just that he spoke. You know, we were praying that he would sing and perform. Yeah. Uh, I do want to quickly mention, I feel like his his, con- his condition is worsening fast, it feels like. Man, I, you know, watching it back on uh, on, on Disney, I, uh, I mean, I was emotional throughout, you know, from the moment Jack got on to the moment that Billy, Billy Idol finished. But I, I was even more so watching it back later that night because you can just see, like he can't, he can't stop moving. Like the whole, his whole left side is his left leg is nonstop. Tap his feet, tap. Um, like you can kind of see his shoulders that move kind of side to side. Like it's taking his toll, man. Um, yeah. And that's just, and that's just him sitting in a chair for a few minutes. Like you notice yeah. it that quickly, and it's even, granted, yes, he's had his speech issues for a couple decades now. But like you could just. Just it, it was it was it it hurt kind of it hurt, it hurt to watch. You, you you froze up right there. Say that again real quick for the listeners. Um, you could just see like his the laboring and his his delivery. I mean, like his breathing, and uh, it was it was really really hard to yeah. hard to watch. Yeah, you know, that said, he was extremely audible though. You could understand. Yes, him. even in yes. that big arena, you could hear him and understand him really easy. Yep. So that that was encouraging. Um, and I got to say, look, it's the small things that matter. The all aboard was fucking awesome. That yep. was fucking perfect. Whoever, whoever's idea that was kudos. That was perfect little great. Touch. Yep. Great. So then we go into the performance section and you have Wolfie Van Halen on guitar, uh, Andrew Watt on guitar, Maynard James Keenan on vocals, Adam Whiteman on keyboards, and you have our man Chad Smith on drums and they perform crazy train. So I just got to say off the top, Ryan. Before, first and foremost, how funny. For one, I love that Wolfie Van Halen is starting to get his due. He's so talented. He's been talented his whole life. He's been shit on his whole life. Yep. I love that he's starting to get his due. He slayed the Crazy Train solo. Yeah. And my only thought, even in real time, was, gosh, Eddie and Randy were rivals. Mm-hmm. And here is Eddie's kid playing Randy Rose at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What the fuck? <laughs> They're right. But in the- yeah, it's it's but, but a cool what the fuck. Yeah, a funny like full circle. But and you know that had Eddie been there, or he's watching from wherever he might be, and yeah, however you think of, you know, post life, he was beaming watching him do that because they were rivals, but they also I think they really respected each other and their ability, and to see his kid up there doing that and nailing it. Had to have had to have been really cool. Had to be, and I was also happy for Wolf because his favorite band is Tool, 
You remember yes. there was that famous photo where the guy asked Eddie to take a picture of him in front of Tool Stage, and he had, yes. and Wolf was like, "This guy has no idea that he just asked Eddie Van Halen to take this photo." Yeah. Uh, and he's doing crazy train with Maynard. So you know, for yeah. for Wolfie, he was just fucking. And Maynard's over there like warming his hands by the by the hot uh -huh. guitar, you know. So that yeah. was kind of smart. Uh, I just know for Wolf that was a fucking magical moment, man. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, that was cool. And you know what, I. You know, I was reading an interview with Maynard. He would just a few days before that, and he admitted he was terrified, like absolutely terrified. He's like, well, Ozzy is not in my vocal range, but I love the guy. I was asked to do it. He's like, I can't say no. And that was a version of Maynard that really hasn't existed on stage in a very long time because he's naturally kind of socially awkward. So he always is kind of like, dressed up he's got mohawks he kind of stay he's on a he's on a stage and like the back of the stage he's not he's ne he's not front and center and he hasn't been for a very long time no matter what uh, which band he's playing with so for him to be like suit jacket glasses his self had had to have been just uncomfortable before him yeah. and Nobody sounds like Ozzy. He didn't sound like Ozzy. He sounded like himself. I think he did. I think he did really, really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was good. Yeah. And another small touch, uh, you know, our Diary of a Madman page on, on, on Instagram, Kathy Rhodes reached out with, with a few things to say to us. And I, I told Kathy in response, I said, you had to enjoy seeing Andrew Watt play with the polka dot flying V. Also, I thought that was a nice touch. Yes. It, it wasn't just like Randy's that had the pit guard on it and stuff to not be mm -hmm. like, the, like he wasn't playing a Sandoval, but just a slight nod. And I, I thought yep. that was, I thought that was a nice touch right there. Yeah. Very, very cool. As we was... see right there. Yeah. yeah. So then we slide into Zach comes out and on, actually that was one of the first things we noticed was the, the, the 12 string guitar was brought. I said, they're going to do Ozzy's next episode of 12 string guitar. And you're like, I don't know. And then you saw the drum head said Ozzy. Oh, the drum head says Ozzy. But Zach walks out to the 12 string guitar and starts playing Mom, I'm Coming Home, which they've not done since the No More Tours tour, but them yeah. actually playing on the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jelly Roll comes out and does Mom, I'm Coming Home. I've been reading online, there's a lot of back and forth on Jelly Roll's performance at the Rock Hall doing Mama, I'm Coming Home, which kudos to Dan. When they announced the fucking artist, Dan was like, he's going to do Mama, I'm Coming Home. And I'm like, mm -hmm. probably. And you were yeah. like, probably. And sure enough, that was it. Um, I want to get your opinion. What did you think about Jelly Roll? So I I am a, a fan of his voice. Um, he's gotten, like, he his, his early days are very hip-hop oriented. Then he went into, like, a kind of soft rock country leaning style and i really do like that i think he has a phenomenal voice on his own and what he does um so i was very excited about that and i think with mama he did pretty well on the verses he really struggled on that chorus like he was he went very you know off key um but it's an, I, i've talked to some other people about this um who may had their comments about it my wife in particular she's like man that was just not not good i think it's another one of those things where like it's not in his wheelhouse it is not you know he he does not sing like ozzy in any capacity but you're asked to do it it's something you might never do normally but you're honored there's some pressure with it he was clearly like reading a teleprompter. He's probably just like if you watch it, you can you can tell he's looking down reading the teleprompter like the whole time, probably shitting himself. Then you have Ozzy thirty feet away from you, watching it all. Like there's you know, and then you're also being streamed live on Disney fucking Plus. Like there's so many yeah. caveats to make something you would never ever normally do like work out. How many times has he, you know, he probably rehearsed the song half dozen times, whatever, beforehand. And he just, you're there and you go for it. And yeah. you're someone who's performed live many, many times. And it's like, shit happens, you know. Um, happens. Yeah. I think, you know, given more opportunities and if it was, you know, like a proper recording, he probably could do a much better job. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he, he was... 
Ozzy's been vocal that he really enjoys his voice and stuff like that, and so he was asked to do it, and he did it, even though it was not it was not who he is, but he at least right. went for it. He went for it, so I can respect that part, that portion of it. So I have a similar opinion. I thought he, I actually thought I really enjoyed his voice on the on the verses. I, I, I yes. thought he was good there. Uh, it was come in, oh, and he was man. He was fucking flat. I was like, yeah. oh, Jelly Roll, you're so flat. And watching it back on TV, even flatter than I realized. I was like, oh, he's yeah, so flat. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, that's often how Ozzy would sing it live in the last couple of tours. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, beside the point. So one thing we talk about a lot on the show, and this is a good time to bring it up. Ozzy can fucking sing, man. And Ozzy can yep. sing high. And Ozzy does sing high. And I, I talk about it a lot. Michael Sweet of Striper has one of the highest voices in rock history. And he's like, fuck, I was just cutting after forever and didn't realize how how high Ozzy is. Like, it's mm-hmm. astronomical. He's yeah. up there. And it gets overlooked because his tone doesn't sound like he's singing so high. But Ozzy's got a massively high vocal and uh, and, a, and a range because really he can go very low. Um, and I think all these singers, including Billy Idol, felt that. Yeah. So, oh. but uh, you know, Jelly Roll, I like him too. Uh, I think he's had a meteoric rise. Like it's been like yeah. this cat came out of nowhere, and within the course of a two or three years he's like the, one of the biggest stars on 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 earth right now yeah and he played my, our little arena in pikeville like last year it's six thousand people it's decent size but now he's like i don't know selling out fucking you know twenty thousand seat venues and shit and it's, yeah. it's he's he's definitely a hot thing right now um all in all i didn't think he was that bad you know he was a little flat it wasn't horrendous you know so yeah. i think some of the hate he's getting is just because he's not a metal guy and they and thought I, they should have a metal guy there. And I think it also kind of drives home what you were just saying is, you know, Ozzy's gotten uh, a, a whole lot of armchair vocal coaches out there who, who've who given Ozzy plenty of slag over the years. And yeah. no, he doesn't have like the wildest range. He doesn't have like all the, the rubatos and the skill set that whatever, but it's, it's his delivery, his inflection in words, just just his general tone that like it's why I I talked about in the our last episode I was on like nobody sounds like him, nobody, nobody has ever showed me somebody that sounds like him ever in a YouTube video, any ever you're never gonna fool me. Yeah. So I think when again guys who are there, it's just not their comfort zone whatsoever they would probably never in a million years do that song by choice on a stage in front of people but they're asked it's an honor and you go for it and it just again it just goes to show how unique Ozzy really is yeah. just to, to be able to pull it off properly is very very hard yeah so then we slide into the next track which was yep. no more tears so I got a comment that tickles me. As a guitar player, you're hard pressed to find a better guitar solo than No More Tears. It, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's iconic in itself. You know, Zach often talks about with Randy Rhodes how he would have the composition inside the composition. This is Zach's composition composition inside the composition. Like the, I love that they featured that guitar solo for a little bit and gave yes. Zach his moment with it. Yeah, uh, he can He comes off the stage and plays it down in the crowd in front of a bunch of people who probably never heard it before. <laughs> but, but uh, I love that Zach got his moment with that solo, his moment to shine with it, um, because it deserves it. It's fucking great. I mean, he didn't put, they didn't, you know, it, it was awesome. It was a cool way to come into it, and then just to slide back into the track and sing the first verse where the third verse would normally be after the solo with mm-hmm. Billy Idol and Steve Stevens. So, uh, you know, I will, I'll, I'll take this one. I thought Billy done a good job of singing an Aussie song like Billy Idol would sing an Aussie song. Yep. You know, it's exactly what it was. That's, that's how cover was supposed to be. You and I spoke about it after the event. Like, it sounded like Billy Idol singing Aussie, and that's really yep. what it should be. I mean, he he, he made it his own a little bit. This is the phrasing. Uh, but all in all, they kept it original, and, uh, you know, what a magical night. And, I, and Billy Idol and Ozzy, you know, I think through – Billy Morrison, because he's in Billy's band. I think Ozzy and Billy Idol have gotten way closer here lately. 
Oh, and yeah. if you'll notice on Ozzy Speaks, he's been talking a lot about we gotta get Billy Idol into the Rock Hall. He's been talking about that a lot. Uh, I think I think they're definitely bonding something there. And Billy Idol was on, you know, Tony Iommi's album that time. Yeah, mm-hmm. the albums. So there's there's some connection there. But uh, I thought all in all, the musical performance. I'm like you, I, I'm a crier. I'm, I'm proud of myself for not crying. I fought them like like Ryan said a minute ago from the moment Jack Black walked out until the end because I was just so you know even though I was disappointed that Ozzy didn't sing, uh, it was still magical. And it was so fucking good. And Rob, we fought Rob Trujillo. Rob Trujillo was on bass for, for the yeah. whole thing. Didn't say Rob. And it's clear how much Ozzy loves Rob. I mean, he he always he has from day one since you know, 98 when he came into the band. He's just always loved Rob. And it was magical. It was special. Even though he didn't sing, I'm super glad I could say I was a part of it. And I know you feel the same way. Just being in the room, seeing Ozzy for what might be the last time we physically see Ozzy. And... Uh, it was excellent, man. It, it was excellent. Uh, there were, watching it back on television, I went back to the room that night and watched it. And Ozzy was sitting there with Jack Black, and he was singing word for word. And I'm like, just turn his fucking mic on. Like, mm-hmm. he's singing word for word. Just turn the mic on and let him sing with them. Yeah. I feel like, I know Ozzy doesn't want to perform sitting down. I feel like he should have. I just do. It, 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 just let him sit there in that awesome-ass chair they had him in and let him let them, let them carry the load. But join yeah. no more tears. Just join them on on those moments. Yeah, and and the crowd would go nuts. But I think ultimately, I nailed it when I told Ryan. I said at one point that night, I said I was just not going to perform because it just kind of struck me that day. I was like, they've made the decision. Just relax, Ozzy. Enjoy the evening. It's your night. We got this. Yeah, and I, I think that's ultimately what happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, but just to get back off of the the Billy Idol thing a little bit, um, I feel the same way because to me, if someone's going to do a cover, I want them to do their own version of it. I I have zero interest in anybody who just tries to recreate and try to you know nail it the way that the original artist did it. It was almost like a punk rock delivery from Billy and I actually really really appreciated that it was nothing like Ozzy but at the same time it did kind of fit like it had that like gravitas and like he's always got that punk rock like attitude fist in the air and like it fit despite you know the way that he's such an icon man I love yes yes it was it was awesome um yeah oh and to quickly correct you Rob has been in the band since 96 or five. It was 96 because it was yes. 96. Good call. 96. I saw him in January of 96 and it was geezer and Randy Castillo. Yep. And by April they had Mike board and Rob Trujillo. So yep. yeah, April of 96. Good call. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Um, but yeah, just, to, and then it's funny how we, I like reversed course, you know, between it. Cause I am not, a crier like at all like at all i don't know what my problem is but that night like i just i just had tears in my eyes the whole time and then i did again watching it later that night and i did a little bit again watching it yesterday with my wife so it's and i think it's just that realization that like man you know for as many times as i've seen him how much of my life has been dedicated to his music and and you know seeing him live and collecting everything and i that that realization that like man this is this is it and to actually be there in person was was again to use that word surreal um and it still feels that way and i'm just i'm glad that i got to be there and i'm I'm glad i got to be there with you too so it was it was awesome so the next morning i woke up and i had my i'm a massive cincinnati Bengals fan and they happened to be playing the browns the next day in cleveland so i had me a ticket of course already for that and i was all jacked up for that and i got up and uh getting ready for the game turned on ozzy ozzy's on my mind right put on some mm-hmm. ozzy and the most melancholy sensation came over me i can't even explain it i almost wanted to just turn it off i didn't i kept listening and I messaged you. I was like, I'm damn near fucking sad today. Yeah. And your response was, I am too. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like a, uh, it felt like the closing of a door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sad right now, actually talking about it. 
Yeah. It was just kind of like um, seeing his his worsening conditioning. Mm-hmm. No one, if he can't sing on that stage on that night, it's not when's happening. he going to? When's he going yeah. to? You know, yeah. it don't mean we're not getting another record. I, I do, I do feel like they may be working on some songs and and, and such because his voice. When he done that all aboard, it about rattled the fucking building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the voice is, but there was he's just been definitely... and he's been. It talked about he's been taking vocal lessons and stuff still. Like he's he yeah. doesn't want to lose it. So yeah. But it was just the realization of it's over as far as mm-hmm. like going out, going out and seeing this. I've been all over the fucking country to see him play, and it's like yep. this is it. Like this is it. You know, and um, it, it it's hard, man. And you know, it was just a realization, you know, of of, of just it was like a, like I said, a, a door closing closure, but mm-hmm. closure we don't want. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't it, asking for it. Yeah, yeah, and and that that really sucked. So before I move on to Sunday, is there anything else about the Rock Hall you want to say, or anything kind of? You know, no man, I awesome. think yeah, I, I would go it, again in a heartbeat. I, I would I would still go back even if Ozzy's not there if I was invited next year, but if somebody had a ticket or something. Like it was it was still a good time. Yeah, if I was if I was curious enough, you know, about the whoever's being inducted, strangely enough, they yeah. had a, a screen scrolling of been like for next oh, yeah. year's potentials of inductees and like leading by a country mile and number one was Iron Maiden. So there's a good chance that that happens next year and I might have to think about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can get uh, get Dan up there with you this time for for me. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but yeah, it you know it it, it definitely was a blast. I got a sweet ass Bark of the Moon T shirt that says Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on the back of it in front of a moon, which I fucking loved. Uh, so thrilled to be able to be a part of it and to be able to be there. Uh, you know, there, there's been moments in the past few years, like when Dan and I got to go to the the, the listening party for patient number nine and then this and it's like how the fuck is this happening like you know it, it's just so amazing so much yeah. but yeah so so glad to be a part of it. wish dan could be there with us because it was definitely um a special moment yeah we could have got handicapped parking and everything <laughs> <laughs> senior citizen discounts and everything <laughs> yeah. the hell so uh sunday I found out on Thursday, got the lucky news that Zach Wild was going to do the national anthem for the Browns and Bengals game, which elated me because I'm a Bengals fan. I already had a ticket. So um, I get out there to the stadium early to make sure I didn't miss. I'm notorious for being like stuck in traffic or walking in late, some shit, you know. So I was all stressed and getting there. I got there at like fucking 10 o'clock <laughs> for a one o'clock <laughs> game. I was like, I cannot miss this. And they had mentioned they were going to do Rock and Roll Hall of Fame themed things. So I thought I'd kind of explain to you all. Uh, what what the scene was like. So as soon as I got to the stadium and was walking in, they had a big crossbar that said Bark the Moon, Ozzy Osbourne across it. And when you walked inside of there, they had like food vendors and stages and just shit going on, like outside the stadium for people to do. And they had a giant stage that was blaring the ultimate sin as I walked up, which was fucking perfect. And they had a big giant Ozzy banner. So this is all Rock and Roll Hall of Fame oriented, but let's be real, it focused on Ozzy, like 100%. Uh, they had the big 25 foot Aussie out there, which was fucking rad as hell. The one they took around for the patient number nine promotionals and such. I got to get a picture with that thing finally. And to sit up there and listen to jam some Aussie on that for a while, man. And, you know, it was neat just to see, again, our man is still getting, he's still the talk of the town the next day, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just so fucking cool um, just seeing all that. And then I finally made my way back into, into the stadium and they played all the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame you know, induct these music throughout the game, but dude, they played a lot of fucking Aussie, like the whole game playing Aussie. And I was just like, fuck, this is great. Uh, but Zach comes out and does the national anthem. Uh, he was completely across the field from me. I could, I couldn't really see him the greatest to be honest, but, uh, I did take a video of it. It's got like 7,000 views already. It's nuts in like two days. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's crazy. the odds that what, what an amazing bonus because, <laughs> Zach's my, you know, Zach and Tony Iommi are my two favorite living guitar players. Randy Rhodes is my favorite, but to be able to throw that bonus on there for, for mm-hmm. no for no extra cash, I mean, how fucking yeah. cool is that to get to know that I've now seen Zach do the national anthem live at a, at a sporting event? It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, and then of course you being you runs oh, up. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. No, well, go ahead. And, go and ahead. you know. He also performed in, in the third quarter. A lot of people were kind of wondering what he would do there. He, they have a little dude who shreds, apparently, that lives. He's probably 
honestly can to the owners or something. But he shreds every game. The people who have season tickets are like, oh, that kid makes my ears hurt and shit and kind of bitching about him. But him and Zach played crazy train together after the third quarter. That's kind of what they did there. That's awesome. Um, but during the game, I see a tweet, an Instagram message from Barbara Ann Wild that said, really want to thank uh, the Cleveland Browns for having Zach for the anthem today, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I look at it and I'm like, this is my fucking view. It, like, it, it looked like the same photo I posted on the Diary of the Mad Men page. Like, it, it was like the same damn photo. And I was like, for a minute, I thought, did she steal her photo and like use that? And then I was kind of <laughs> like, look behind me. Their fucking suite was right behind me, like fucking 20 rows up. There's Barbara Ann sitting up there and Big Dave watching the game. <laughs> and oh, I'm like, nice. Holy shit. I didn't know Big Dave was back with Zach, but apparently he is. Uh, Big Dave's his assistant, for those that don't know. Uh, went with Ozzy for a long time. I think yeah. he's back with Zach now. Big Dave's like a, a, a nice guy, too. I've been around Big Dave a few times. Uh, super sweet guy. Um, but I was like, shit, they're right behind me. So I thought, man, if I hear later, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to go speak to Barb. She messages with us all the time on the diary page. Like, she's the sweetest person. And um, at halftime, I was going up to say hello, and Zach was in there, and they walked out. And I was like, fuck. They were walking out as I was getting up to the to the suite. So I thought, well, they're they're leaving. You know, they're gonna go watch him do his third quarter thing and they'll be out. So I kind of gave up on worrying about it. Watch the game. My Bengals kick ass and win. And they're up two <laughs> touchdowns with like three minutes to go in the game, four minutes, something like that. And I'm like standing up and I look back and fucking Zach is sitting right there by himself, just hanging out in that suite by himself. And I was like, fuck, I gotta go talk to him. So I go up there and I've I've had the fortune of meeting Zach twice before, maybe three times. Um uh, three times, three times I've met Zach before that. So this is my fourth, but I've never been able to just to casually chat with him, Ryan, and just really kind of shoot the bull. And this was yeah, yeah. definitely the environment for that. He was just hanging out, sitting there watching the game. And I walked up and I had my phone kind of like, can we get a selfie? And he was like, yeah. And I'm thinking he's just going to kind of do this. He gets up and walks over and hangs his head out the damn window. And we just start chatting it up, man. And uh, I kind of told him, I said, dude, so excited that you were here. We're already having a ticket for this game. I'm a massive Bengals fan. And, what a fucking awesome bonus to get to watch you do the anthem, you know. And yeah, you know, for those that don't know, the Cleveland Guardians lost the baseball series to the Yankees for the American League Championship Series that day before. So he's like, ah, oh, the the Cleveland people's had a had a rough weekend, and you know, because you, your Bengals, because I said I'm happy my Bengals are winning, and it's like, yeah, the Cleveland fans have had a rough weekend, and there's a line of people sitting there, and I said, hey, I said, don't let this man fool you. He's a die fucking hard. Yankees fan I said he's tickled to death you lost that game yesterday <laughs> and Zach kind of laughs and he's like well yeah yeah <laughs> he's kind of he didn't really deny it but we were just talking I introduced him mentioned the show to him that we do the show and stuff and he was just kind of like yeah right on you know and uh he said hey I got some fun he said I think I got some picks hold on a minute and he just reached in his pocket and gave me a couple picks that he had in his fucking front pocket and we just kind of chatted for a minute dude and I was like got a photo and then uh he said give me your phone and I thought what's he doing and I gave him my phone and then he reached it to Big Dave and had he said, take take one of us from this side. And he had Big Dave take a photo of us, which was fucking the photo's blurry as all get out. It's not a good picture. But at the same time, it's rad as hell because Zach took my phone and had Big Dave take it of us, you know, which is fucking cool as hell. Like I'm sitting that's, there going, is this real life right now? <laughs> that's awesome, man. So awesome. You know, and then I just once that was over, there's like a minute to win the game, minute and a half. So I just sat down. And kind of done with him, you know, said, said, appreciate you, Zach, man. Last night, I, I, I did tell him, I said, dude, last night was fucking awesome. Like, we did discuss the show. Yeah. I was like, last night was just fucking perfect. It was great. And I sat down, and what do they do? They played Diary of a Madman on the fucking PA. And oh, I man. stood up and looked back at Zach, and he just goes. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, sat back down, but I was like, how fucking cool. You know what oh, I mean? Man. Like, That's how so fucking, fucking cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then I got looking at the photo I took, and I looked dumb as shit in it. Dumb as shit. <laughs> so once the game was over, I stood back up, and I was like, Zach. And he came right back over to the window. He's like, what's up? I said, can we do this photo again? That first one sucked. <laughs> I said, I look, I look stupid as hell. He's like, yeah. So we took another photo, and I thanked him again and talked just a little bit more about, again, about the, the Hall of Fame, actually. And it was awesome, man. What a what an awesome caper. I felt so lucky. Like, That's so to, cool. The, my wife said it best. She said, Josh, that entire fucking stadium, and you're sitting right in front of him like that. Like, think about that. You yeah. Know? 
The odds. So, the odds are astronomical. So what a, what a great event, man. What a great weekend. You know, uh, the closure we didn't want, but at the same time, man, it was fucking magical. I, the, I, I, I'm like this, you. I, go ahead. No, it's the, this, that we didn't want, but at the same time kind of needed. So Yeah. And like you said earlier, still coming down from it. You know, just so many great moments and great stories. And I'm sure we're probably missing some of this. We've been going for an hour and 20 minutes, but it's still yet like I'm sure there's stuff we forgot because there's oh, so do. much going on that weekend. Yeah. It, was, it was amazing. So yeah. absolutely amazing. So anyway, uh, in, in closure, Dan, we miss you. Uh, I'm sure the fans miss you, A, being here with us, but two, the fact this is going to be a raw-ass, shitty-ass recording that I probably won't edit any of this stuff out where we fucked up or where we uh, froze up or whatever. We have no music to play us in and out, but it is what it is. That's why we miss you, and that's why we love you. Yeah. But anyway, that said, Ryan, until uh, next time, do you have anything that you would like to say? No, man, I just uh, – it was uh, a pleasure to be able to go and do this with you. It was <laughs> – Great meeting after all these years, and uh, <laughs> I look forward to uh, you know another hug in another sixteen years. Absolutely, <laughs> it was a pleasure, man, for real. We yeah. we you know the first time my phone died and we couldn't meet each other, and the same time he ditched me for some beers with his friends, which is all good. I get it; it's okay. But no, it, it meant the world to me to spend you know get to do that. And now we got to get Ryan and Dan together because me and Dan hang, me and Ryan hang. Now we got to get Dan and Ryan to hang. So we, yeah. we got to figure this out sometime, but. Something will come along. There, there'll be a day where all three of us are together and do a live podcast. That'll be fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Anyway, until the next time, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs>